I work in biomedical optics, um, and in biomedical optics we use light to uh, study human tissues. The human body is actually quite transparent to light, in the, particularly in the near-infrared range of the electromagnetic spectrum, and that means you can get light quite a long way through tissue before it's absorbed. Most of my research focuses on, on leveraging that effect to produce images of the human brain, and to do that non-invasively um, and safely and in any environment. Brain imaging technologies, like the ones uh, our group has been developing, can help us study the brain in a wide range of different situations. And this is really important, particularly for baby brain imaging. Babies don't like staying still. And also, during development, we see things like babies gaining motor skills or gaining social skills. And these are things that we just can't study if babies are confined to a classic clinical MRI scanning environment. By using think something as simple as LEDs, you can study oxygenation, you can image brain function, and you can do all that in a device that's naturally cheap and miniaturizable and, and ultimately wearable. So working with our industry partners to, to miniaturize these technologies um, and get them to the point where you can literally put on a cap and you can produce images of, of brain function and brain oxygenation. The beauty of this relationship between Rob's team and, and my team is this interaction between the clinical side where we have certain clinical problems uh, and the engineering and physics side where they've got new technologies and it's being able to communicate across the two what are the problems that we face, what are the potential solutions and limitations of the technology uh, that they can produce. And the interactions work really well in particularly with having students working across uh, both uh, departments. Uh, it's a sort of continuous day-to-day -day sort of interaction. Premature infants, for example, will spend months in the intensive care unit and they'll only receive one or two brain scans in that period of time. Our technology allows uh, us to image the brain and image brain oxygenation at the bedside almost continuously um, and that means we can learn a lot about how the brain develops and how brain function develops, but we can also potentially identify injuries earlier than is currently possible. That's on the clinical side. On the neuroscience side, we can study the brain in a range of new environments, a range of new situations that just hasn't been possible before. And that includes studying infants, for example, while they naturally play or they interact with their parents. And those types of experiments just haven't been possible without this type of technology. The first thousand days of life really sort of shapes the rest of our, our, our futures. And the more we can understand that, particularly for the 1 in 10 infants who require uh, extra additional care in, in the neonatal intensive care unit, the better their lifelong chances are.